Hello, Namaskar and welcome to the CAA show. CAA, as all of you know, is Conversations and Analysis. And my name is Jagi Basin. So it sounds unbelievable, but the fact is that the future of India-United States relationship had come to rest on the sale of predator drones to India. And why do I say that? I say that because the sale of these drones had become a kind of a litmus test that whether all that big talk that is that has been going on between the two countries for the last almost one year, whether both the countries could walk that talk. And there were vested interests, there were all kind of players on both sides, both in Washington and in Delhi, who wanted to cut the deal, who wanted that these predator drones should not be sold to India. There was a lot of negativity behind the scenes and almost three days back, not even 72 hours back uh, in a media briefing when the US uh, spokesperson Vedant Patel, he was point blank asked this question whether this deal would be going through and he gave a very non-committal answer. There was no enthusiasm in his answer and it almost seems as if the United States had nixed the deal. Then there were reports here of the Lib in the Liberal Channel, The Wire, uh, reports written by Colonel Ajay Shukla, who a lot of people know, he's in the Congress camp. People like him, they had all said that the US had stopped this deal to India. And there were people on the right also in India who were saying that it is a good thing that this deal should not go through. So there were forces on all sides who were very skeptical of this deal. But the fact is, finally, this deal has gone through. It has been approved by the State Department. It has been approved by the Senate. And now these predator drones can be sold to India. Now, why am I devoting an entire episode on these predator drones to India? Because the sale of these drones, uh, that India gets these drones, has suddenly become very, very important, almost critical for India. And it is also important that these drones come from the US because it was, as I said before, a litmus test, a test that whether the two countries can have a meaningful partnership. Remember the United States had once, not very long back, had said that the relationship with India would be perhaps the most meaningful relationship of the 24th century. So this deal was the first test, the first litmus test whether the two countries can work together uh, for the mutual benefit of both the countries but also for the entire world. And so, as I said, it's a good thing that this deal has come through. But today in this episode, I want to talk to you about India's power play. How India was very active behind the scenes in ensuring that this deal comes through because uh, the Indian government, there were people within the Indian establishment who knew that there were forces out there who were trying to sabotage this deal. And India indulged in this power play and this is the power play which I want to talk about in this particular episode. Now, but before I do that, let us me first give you a kind of an overview of uh, the drone situation in India. And uh, why drones have suddenly become critical, almost absolutely necessary for the defense infrastructure of the country. Now, all of you are aware of uh, the Ukraine war that has been raging on for the last two years. And if there is one thing which the Ukraine war teaches us, that is that the most capable and offensive defense system, the defense platform, which will ensure victory for the for a particular side is the capability of drones. More than anything else, uh, the Ukraine war has shown and the future of warfare also will, will depend upon the fact which country has the most efficacious, has the most lethal drones which can strike terror in the hearts of the enemy. And maybe in that department we are not so well off today and that is why probably we need these predator drones we are developing our own indigenous drones also but that's for the future so drones the importance of drones cannot be minimized number two a lot of people have been saying that the predator drones are going to be used against china they might be uh, 
if there's a future conflict with China, the, these drones could be used. Uh, but let me start from the basics first and let me give you an overview of why we need these drones. In very simple terms, in layman's terms, drones perform a two-pronged function. One is that they are your eye in the sky. They literally can look into all kinds of terrain. There are all weather drones which can look over large swaths of land. They know exactly what is going on on the ground right down to the millimeter on the ground on ground zero. And drones also have a secondary use that they can be used as an offensive weapon. They can fire uh, missiles from the top. They can fire from heights as high as 30,000, 40,000 feet. They can blast away. They can vaporize literally your enemy on the ground. And that is why we need these drones. Now, my personal uh, feeling is that we need these drones more against Pakistan at the moment than we need them against China. The China uh, factor could come in into play for reconnaissance and for offensive weapons, maybe at a later stage. But right now we need these drones against Pakistan. And what is the reason for that? These drones could be used to minimize infiltration or to eliminate infiltration in India. They are your eye in the sky. They can spot uh, movement. They can spot uh, or both man, machine, everything on the ground to the last detail. And then a drone operator who's sitting on the ground, that drone operator locks in uh, on that particular target and missiles are fired from these drones and those targets can be eliminated, which means that then India has a lock on the ca characters like Tawud, on Hafiz Sevid, and all these other terrorist commanders. We can, if we wish then, we can literally eliminate them at our will. Which means that you create an entire cadre, cadre of drone or Air Force operators who are working these drones 24 into 7. Um, and they have, you have your eye in the sky 24 into 7. And these drones in the future can then map out the entire area. Just to give an example for it, uh, in the Rajori sector, when we have, where there has been so much infiltration recently, uh, so many Indian soldiers have died unnecessarily. All that can be avoided if you have your drones which are loitering in the sky, which have mapped out the entire area, which can see through the infiltration. All you need to do then is to fire the missiles. You can eliminate your targets without any risks. So that is why we need these drones. These drones uh, will play a very critical factor in both reconnaissance and in offensive elimination of hostile targets. So something very interesting was happening when uh, the G20 summit took place and there was a lot of positive talk with President Biden. Um, as I said, the deal for the drones had already been approved of uh, during the June visit of the Prime Minister to the US. And everybody thought that the predator drones were coming to India. And then suddenly this entire Pannu thing happened. And my own feeling is that the Panu thing actually had been kind of a, a chimera or it had been an artificial creation of sorts because there were certain interests, uh, there were certain liberal, woke, hard left interests in the State Department which are not very happy with this rapid progress that was occurring in India-US ties. And they wanted to, uh, as it were, put the brakes on this relationship. And therefore, they used the Pannu issue, the so-called assassination attempt on Pannu. To, they wanted to use that particular issue to sabotage this predator deal. And the good thing is that the Indian side understood the play that was going on, the shadow boxing that was going on, because the approval for these uh, drones was being delayed, there was not coming uh, and the Indian side could sense that something was going on and therefore, and this is what I'm going to talk about today, India then started its own power play to not only match up to this attack that was coming from vested interests in the US but rather to counter this attack and ensure that the drone deal, which was the first deal of its kind, would come through. So how did India do that? What was India's power play out there? And there were some very interesting things which especially the foreign minister, Mr. Jayashankar, undertook, which 
was part of the power play and I'm going to talk about that. When this entire negativity started coming from the US regarding the Pannu issue, which was an excuse actually to, as I said, to derail the larger relationship, the defense relationship, the technological relationship between India and the United States. What did the first thing Mr. Jayashen could do? He took this visit, which was already on the cards, that visit had already been approved of earlier, but uh, it was very well timed, the visit to Russia. And in that Russia visit, he waxed eloquent on the ties with Russia. Uh, he personally met uh, President Putin also. And all this was messaging which was going out to the United States that we know you are backtracking. We know that there are now you're getting doubts about the relationship. We know that through the Pannu issue, you want to exert pressure on us, but we won't succumb to pressure. And therefore, this entire projection of the Russia visit was the first uh, play in the power play which India took upon to counteract all the negativity that was coming from uh, vested interest in Washington. Then a couple of other interesting things which happened uh, which actually pushed forward the power play that was started that was started by the foreign minister. Uh, foreign minister Jay Shankar started giving selective interviews. And these interviews to media channels and to various outfits were very interesting because the thrust of these interviews was that the relationship with Russia was time tested. Uh, it was comfortable. It was important and India would never let go of it. It was, as I said, we were sending a message to Washington. In the same breath, uh, foreign minister said that relationship with Canada had plunged to a new low because Canada was harboring terrorists, but he refrained from criticizing the United States directly. You can see the subtle power, uh, power play which was going on that at one level you are criticizing one of the closest allies of the United States, that is Canada, but at another level you were refraining from directly criticizing uh, the US despite all the provocations that were coming our way. Uh, when the US had instituted its own inquiry or they had detained Gupta uh, in the in the Panu assassination uh, plot, the so-called Panu assassination plot. So the media projection by Dr. Jay Shankar actually was part of the power play where India was building up a case to counteract this negativity. Then a, a very another interesting innocuous development which happened that, uh, and we were not even aware of this thing, but it was a big and a welcome su surprise. One of our private players, or one of our very important private players, that is the Adani Group, they uh, unveiled the Drishti drone, the all-weather Drishti drone in India, which actually, in a very strange way, looks very much like the Predator drone. Uh, a very powerful drone which loiters at heights of 30,000 feet um, and which can be used for especially for reconnaissance abilities and um, the Indian Air Force had given has given the go ahead for many more of these Drishti drones which was the first big step we had taken to having our own capability in drone warfare. So that was another message being sent by India to the US through the unveiling of the Drishti drone. drone. And then uh, the snub which came from the US when President Biden, uh, whether he received the invitation or not, there is a big controversy about that, but that is not important. The important thing is he did not come for the Republic Day, but at the last moment, our trusted friend and our trusted partner, the France, and President Macron came for the Republic Day. And the biggest uh, part of this power play was that India really played up that visit. Now, if you look at that visit, uh, not that particularly any great defense agreements were signed, one, but that's a continuing process. But what we really achieved through that visit was to send a message to, not only to America, but to the rest of the world, that along with Russia, France was one of our tried and tested partners. And look at the projection, you know, the projection of both the Prime Minister and President Macron going in an open jeep through the streets of Jaipur. Um, 
which was almost as powerful projection when Donald Trump had come to India. It was on the same lines. And all these uh, messages, all this messaging was going back to the US that, listen, if you uh, don't give us the deals, if you, uh, as they put, put a snafu or you put a glitch in this deal, then you are the ones who are going to lose. We are not going to lose. We have other friends and partners, including very important uh, defense partners in the world who will gladly be our, at our side whenever we want. So all these steps were taken as part of the power play of India because they knew that there were forces out there which was out to wreck the India-US relationship starting with the Predator drone deal. Then we took another very important step and I want to talk about that. Uh, when the Houthi rebels started firing their own drones uh, into the Red Sea and to kind of almost uh, jeopardize uh, shipping through the Red Sea corridor. And the United States then set up a coalition. They set up a coalition of, they wanted navies of different countries to come and together they would form a kind of a armada to counter the Houthi rebels. Uh, India stayed away from that. India could have easily done because we were cooperating in court. We were, we are cooperating with the US in the Indo-Pacific. And if we wanted, we could have joined that armada, uh, but we did not. We did not join that armada. Rather, we deployed our own warships standalone in that entire corridor to ensure a seamless navigation through those waters and all the tankers, which uh, the oil tankers and other kind of goods, which keep coming from that corridor, especially heading towards India. We deployed our own resources. We did not join our resources with the United States led armada. And that was a very important message we sent to the US in our power play that, listen, our, we are not here at your beck and command that when you feel like you will do things with us, but when you don't feel like when you want to pressure us, uh, you can pressure us. We are not going to come under pressure. We act on our own. We believe in our strategic autonomy. That was the big message. And all these factors combined in Indian's power play to send the message home to the US that if these deals go, don't go through, then yes, we will lose, but you will be probably the bigger loser because you will lose out on a friend and a trusted ally within quotes. Uh, you will be the biggest loser, not India. We can still carry on our own. And therefore, this act of deploying warships and patrolling the sea lanes, as it were, on our own, showed the will of India. That was one of the biggest steps combined with the other earlier steps which I've taken about. This was India's power play to send a direct message to the United States. And then to top it recently, not even a few weeks back, uh, three hijacking attempts and India responded, its warships responded. You know about the case of INS Sumitra, uh, the Marcos commandos who boarded vessels and then arrested Somalian pirates. We were ready to take offensive action. This was no longer an India of some bygone era, which would sit in the sidelines and uh, watch the action. But we were right in the thick of action. We made our intentions clear. And this was a powerful message we were sending, not only to the US, but to the rest of the world, that we can take action when we want to, and we will protect our strategic interests come what may. This was the entire power play developed by India actually to send a message more than any other country in the world. It was to the US. The good thing is then uh, that when all this was going on, there were, there were forces out there who were absolutely confident that this entire framework of the India-US framework had collapsed. And the good thing, as I said, was that there were sane voices, there were saner heads in the US which realized that India was, was completely, you know, as it was that they would stick to their strategic autonomy rule. Nothing could shake them out of it, whether it be predator drones or whether it could be the lure of GE engines. Uh, if you wanted a relationship with India, then you would have to, it had to be on their terms and not 
on the terms of the United States. That was a big message going across. And the U.S. in the larger interest saw, to, saw it that eventually in the Indo-Pacific, they needed India more than, rather than India needing the U.S. Because whether it's the China threat or threat from other hostile forces, uh, it was the other way around. The point of this entire power play being that the U.S. actually needed India more rather than India needing the U.S. Uh, India stood up with its power play to the U.S. to convey a message that yes, we could stand on, on, we can stand on our own. We need your technology, but if your technology does not come, and that is the point they proved through the Drishti Dome that we are quite capable of developing our own indigenous technology. We can have our own drones. So this entire power play swung into action. <clears throat> Dr. Jay Shankar saw to it that all this was projected, but again, in a subtle manner, not in a menacing manner. At no stage, if you notice, were we threatening the US, at no stage were we matching rhetoric for rhetoric. There was a lot of rhetoric coming from the US, especially during the Pannu assassination plot case. But we were not matching that. We All we said was, yes, we will look into the allegations and if there is any wrongdoing, we will fix that. But we gave no promises. We did not, as it is to kind of agree with the aggressive aggression which the United States was showing at that particular point. But in the subtle power play, India conveyed the message to the US that, guys, you need us more than we need you. We have other trusted partners and friends in the world and we are perfectly capable on carrying on our relationships with them with our and our strategy of strategic autonomy best serves us and not so much as this deep alliance with you where you tell us to do because the problem with the US has always been that when it comes to offensive defense systems, offensive defense platforms, the US always attaches political riders with that. They expect you to do their bidding. They expect you to do a lot of things if they give these platforms to you. But we did not agree to that. And this subtle power play therefore came into being. And a kind of a reverse pressure was applied on the US that they would finally see the light and see that they did not want to spoil this relationship with India because if the Predator deal had collapsed, then trust you me, the entire gamut of India-US relationship would have been sad. This was the big litmus test which was coming the way of both countries. In the process, what happened? In the process, before this deal was approved, there were a couple of other things which have happened. Now we finally know the, fo the forces which are hostile to India within the country also. See, channels like The Wire, commentators like Ajay Shukla, the Indian origin US lawmakers who even till 24 hours back were opposing this deal. Now we know the forces, we know the people who will go to any extent to see to it that India's interests are jeopardized, who will see to it that this uh, emergent relationship between the India and the US is strained. These are the people, false stories had been put out by The Wire, had been put out by characters like Ajay Shukla and a lot of other opinion uh, in India. We have to, if nothing else, this entire episode has told us that we have to be very careful out here. And in the uh, amongst the US lawmakers, Indian origin US lawmakers are the worst of the lot. We have to be careful of these people because these are the people who will first stab you in the back before anybody else does that. Finally, in conclusion, let me say that even though the Predator deal has been approved, we understand the importance of drones. We understand the importance of this relationship and the deal has been approved. But the fact is, we still have a tense relationship going on with the US. And the reason for that is because the fundamental political outlook of the US administration as compared to the Indian administration is completely different. There are a lot of point of convergences. Uh, we have talked about that earlier in earlier episodes. Also, I don't have to reiterate that the India and the US actually have so much common ground. Uh, you can fill up volumes about that. But the fact is, 
in terms of strategic outlook, in terms of strategic autonomy issues, there are huge differences. So therefore, we still have to see how this deal pans out. Because the problem with US weapon system is, especially the offensive ones, is that when it comes to spare parts, then we always run into a problem. Uh, this has been the history of other countries with the US. This can happen with us also. So that's the point we have to be very careful of. At the same time, we have to be careful of these Trojan horses which are there in our country. I've all already mentioned that. Uh, people who are peddling fake news, who gave this fake news about the Predator deal. But finally, all things end well. The good thing is uh, the relationship, hopefully, as I said, uh, within courts is back on track and maybe it can uh, take off from here. This was the first litmus test which both countries have passed. India has stood its ground by its very subtle power play. It has conveyed to the US that we are ready to come close to you. We want a very close relationship with the US, but it will have to be on our terms and not on your terms where you command and we kind of deliver. It's not going to happen. That's a message we have conveyed uh, both subtly and forcefully to the United States. So on this note, I come to the end of this episode of the CAA show and I hope you really enjoy this particular episode. You like our show, do subscribe to us. And on this note, it's goodbye and cheers from my end.